the title of this video is not clickbait. This here is the Ingersoll 4016. It's an 800 pound tank of a lawnmower from 1995, but it's also so much more. It's a part of Ingersoll's long-standing line of garden tractors. So today, let's take a look at the history of these incredible machines, why anyone would want one, and if you should consider getting one today. The Colt Manufacturing Company was founded in 1962 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin by two brothers, Wally and Warren Johnson. While they initially intended to produce gear-driven garden tractors, as was the norm at that time, they were also developing a new type of hydraulic motor, which would come to be called the orbital motor. Eventually, plans for the gear-driven tractors were scrapped, and in 1963, the brothers would release their first tractors featuring their newfangled orbital motors, the Colt Model 7 and Model 9. These orbital motors worked so well that they caught the eye of Case, who was looking to one-up their competitors, John Deere, Massey Ferguson, Alice Chambers, and International Harvester, who had all managed to beat Case into the fledgling garden tractor market. And in October of 1964, Case purchased the Colt Manufacturing Company, and after a few cosmetic changes, began selling them at Case dealerships nationwide in 1965. After Case took over, things went pretty well for the garden tractor line. In 1971, the Snapfast attachment system was developed, which allowed for the mower deck to be swapped with other attachments without the use of tools, and would continue to be used on all future tractors. As the 80s came around though, their best times seemed to be behind them, and the consolidation of the agriculture industry was in full swing. With sales in a downward spiral, cash hemorrhaging, and a merger with International Harvester not helping matters, Case sold off their garden tractor division, which at this time was still somewhat profitable, to John Ingersoll, a member of the family who owned and operated the Ingersoll Rand Company. Other than the family name though, there was no corporate connection between Ingersoll Rand and the newly renamed Ingersoll Equipment Company. They were operated as completely separate entities. Sales continued on their slow decline though. 1989 saw the final major redesign of the Ingersoll Garden Tractor, with everything being consolidated into two product lines. The 3000 series, which had the smaller rear wheels, and the 4000 series, which had the larger rear wheels. Ingersoll was terrible at advertising, which is to say, they basically didn't advertise at all. Unless you went looking for one, they had largely disappeared from the public eye. While their garden tractors were still considered, even at this time, to be best in class, this complete lack of marketing spurred sales even lower. And in 2004, Ingersoll would file for bankruptcy. A year later, they were purchased by Eastman Industries and production resumed, but only for the 4000 series. The fact that you probably haven't heard of these tractors should tell you how well that purchase went for Eastman though. Sales continued to slump, and the tractors became more and more difficult to get, and while no official statement was given, it appears that production of new tractors ceased in late 2015, bringing an end to an impressive 53-year run of American-made garden tractors. That doesn't mean you can't enjoy one today, though. Because of their long production run and impressive build quality, there are still plenty available on the used market. This here is mine. It's an Ingersoll 4016 from 1995. As the name implies, it features a 16 horsepower Briggs & Stratton Vanguard V-Twin engine. Vanguards are Briggs's top tier model, usually used in industrial applications, and most people consider them to be roughly on par with a Honda or Kawasaki. Mine has just over a thousand hours on the clock and it still performs perfectly. The front of the motor drives a belt that runs to a snowblower or a mower deck, and the back of the motor drives a hydraulic pump capable of moving eight gallons per minute through two separate hydraulic circuits. The first is a 575 PSI circuit that handles any hydraulic accessories, like raising or lowering a plow, and the second is a 2100 PSI circuit that drives the orbital motor. That orbital motor is connected to a high-low gearbox, which enables this tractor to push or tow almost anything. There have been a ton of attachments made for these tractors over the years, some of which include a hydraulic bagger, a log splitter, a rototiller, a bush hog, and a class zero three-point hitch, just to name a few. I personally just use mine for snow removal and lawn mowing, with the 48-inch deck and the front blade. And so far, I've been pretty happy with it. Using a lever to control forward and reverse does take some getting used to compared to more modern pedal controls, 
but after a while you do adjust. My 16 horsepower model doesn't quite have the chops to mow in high range, so I think a 60 inch deck would be a nice time saving upgrade down the road. The 790 pound weight of this tractor also means that traction isn't nearly as much of an issue as it can be sometimes with our Cub Cadet lawn tractor, which is a couple hundred pounds lighter. I mostly just bought it for the longevity though. Whenever it makes sense, I like to buy things once and have them last me as long as possible. And with proper maintenance, these Ingersolls should last a really long time. As long as the hydraulic system stays sealed and you've got a good motor turning the pump, these things will just keep trucking. And on top of that, it is fully greasable, like you'd expect from a real tractor. And almost everything is designed to be rebuilt in a garage with basic tools, including the deck spindles, the hydraulic pump, and the hydraulic motor. So, should you get one today? Well, maybe not. The people this tractor was built for are few and far between nowadays. Even for me, it's overkill. It's really ideal for someone with a decent amount of land who does some small-scale farming for their dinner table. And as America has shifted further and further from its agrarian beginnings, the market for a machine like this has pretty much dried up. If all you're doing is trimming grass, a zero turn will do it much faster and easier than this Ingersoll. And if you actually do farming at some commercial scale, something this small just won't cut it. Ingersoll was actually one of the last companies to shutter its garden tractor lineup. Cub Cadet, Wheel Horse, which would later be known as Toro, and Husqvarna all pivoted towards making lighter and cheaper lawn tractors and zero turns about 10 years prior. In fact, if you want a brand new garden tractor today, there's really only one option, John Deere. Their X500 and X700 series tractors are pretty much the last garden tractors still being made today. And at an MSRP of nearly $17,000 for the top spec X758 model, I'd wager John Deere doesn't exactly have people lining up around the block to buy them. And when you can get a secondhand Ingersoll for anywhere from $500 to $3,000, depending on the model, condition, and implements it includes, the Ingersoll seems like a no-brainer to me. And if hunting one down seems too difficult, there are actually still Ingersoll tractor dealers around, though they are few and far between. Case Ingersoll Tractors Northeast seems to be the largest though. Not only do they sell secondhand tractors that have been professionally serviced, but they also sell several upgrade kits for these tractors, such as thrust bearings for the steering pivots. This isn't sponsored, they just seem genuinely interesting in keeping these Ingersolls going strong. And you know, since they aren't selling any new tractors anymore, why wouldn't they? Which brings us to the conclusion. The 4016 is a great little tractor that will last a really long time and was built in America by a company with a long and rich history. If your Home Depot special lawn tractor leaves you wanting more, a Case or Ingersoll garden tractor might be just what the doctor ordered. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit like, get subscribed, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And I will see you guys in the next one.